Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, presentation of Team Photonics Technical Offering. I, uh, my name is Adrien Villa and I will guide you through this, uh, this short overview of our latest novelties. So um, starting with some corporate background, so we are um, a small uh, enterprise like a 50 staff based in, in Grenoble in the southeast of France. Uh, team was originally incorporated in 1998 around um, the IONX technology, as we'll see, like the uh, integrated photonics on, on glass. But um, after the, two, the dot com crash, it took a turn in 2005 by acquiring the uh, passively Q switch microchip laser line from JDSU. Um, and since then, it's been uh, most of its business, actually. It's only um, back in 2016 that um, this IONX line of integrated photonic product was restarted uh, following the advance of, uh, of silicon photonics. And uh, since then, we've expanded it um, towards a, a more complete platform. So today we will, uh, we will have an overview of the, our two product lines, starting with, uh, with the lasers. Um, so the core um, technology of Teams uh, passively Q-switch uh, diode pump solid state laser is the microchip cavities. So a microchip cavity is basically a stack of uh, a gain material and a saturable absorber sandwiched in between two dielectric mirrors. And this very compact cavity turns uh, the continuous uh, power of a, a semiconductor pump diode into a stream of uh, high peak power uh, picosecond pulses. Um, the typical pulse width of our, um, from the, of our oscillators ranges from 150 to 900 picoseconds, uh, with some mole exceeding this, uh, this kind of duration. And the benefits are actually quite obvious because it makes very compact and cost-effective lasers and uh, the absence of any um, free space optics or almost any free space optics makes them very reliable on the field. Um, the typical performance range of, uh, of such lasers, well, they rely on uh, ND-YAG um, cavities most of the time, so 1064, and Tim has acquired a strong expertise in, uh, in handling the harmonics of YAG. So we are able to propose a range of lasers in the UV down to uh, 213 nanometers in the deep UV with, as we'll see, uh, pretty long lifetimes. Uh, the peak powers are pretty high in the 100 kilowatts range, uh, with repetition rates ranging from a few kilohertz up to 150 kilohertz, typically. Um, and for uh, amplified uh, lasers, the uh, average power can be up to 7 watts. But I would say the common quality of these lasers is that the, the beam is, um, is of high quality with, uh, with an M-squared uh, factor um, close to the theoretical limit. Uh, also note that we, we have uh, a few models based on, uh, on erbium YAG or thulium, um, thulium doped cavities at 1535 or close to two microns as well. Um, well, this is a, an overview of what uh, the lasers actually look like compared to a, to a two euro coin. So the upper line are the standard uh, microchip lasers while the bottom line um, feature the amplified lasers, which are uh, obviously a little bit bigger, but still uh, compact enough for a standard OEM integration. Um, these models can, can feature a few options like, uh, like external triggering, for instance, that's a, that's a standard in our catalog. Um, in terms of, of novelty, over the past couple of years, we've worked hard to uh, extend uh, the, the lifetime of one of our best sellers, I would say, which is uh, the 213 uh, nanometer uh, power chip laser. So we've shown that after seven gigashots, uh, it still keeps 80% of its power, which is actually quite a performance uh, for, uh, for a deep UV lasers. Um, because, of course, these radiations are quite harsh to, uh, to the various optics inside. There's no moving part, once again, so it's, it's really robust. It uh, can deliver a uh, 2 microjoule pulse at, uh, at repetition rates up to, uh, to 1 uh, kilohertz, while, once again, the beam stays of high quality with an M-squared factor of 1.4, uh, even after uh, several gigashots. Another, another novelty we, we've worked on um, quite intensely are uh, the OPOs for mid infrared applications. So this is part of, uh, they were developed part of a, a project with, uh, with defense agencies in France. And uh, they turn out to be single frequency, but still tunable in the seven to 11 micron range. 
So long wave infrared, they rely on a, on a specific type of, uh, of nonlinear crystal. Uh, while the, the actual wavelength can be controlled thanks to a, an integrated spectrometer, um, its peak power can reach five watts, which makes it uh, very well suited for uh, LIDAR applications uh, and especially gas detection. Of course, as all our other lasers, they are air-cooled, so the operation is, is greatly uh, facilitated. This product will be available at the, at the end of this year uh, commercially, so um, don't hesitate to, to come to, to contact us if you, um, if you see an interest for it. Um, recently, Tim has also expanded its, uh, its optics offering towards uh, additional modules, I would say, like uh, additions to our lasers to, uh, to expand their uh, application range or to, uh, to modify the, 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 typically the, the pulse train that is emitted. So we are able to, to take your needs from, uh, from the very basic idea and do um, the whole engineering cycle and the subassembly, um, the prototyping and the medium series production of modules containing lenses, reflectors, filters, uh, even modulators or thermal control. Um, if, if needed, we can also um, outsource and license the manufacturing into, uh, into the company's, um, the customer's assembly line. Um, well, that's it for the for the laser novelty. So now I, um, let me switch to the the second product line that Teams offers, which is a branded IonX for uh, Ion Exchange. So Ion Exchange is uh, is a unique um, process to make um, waveguides on on glass substrates. So in essence, you you obtain uh, passive photonic integrated circuits or PLC, planar light wave circuit, depending on how you call it. So we'll see that we, we start from um, pure silicate glass wafers that are, um, that are patterned in the clean room um, and then locally uh, doped uh, in a hot uh, solution. Uh, then we dice these wafers, we can pick them and package them to obtain uh, optical components uh, very similar to, uh, to what you may achieve, for instance, with optical fibers, but in an integrated way. So the value proposal is the usual one for glass. We can exploit the whole transparency band from, uh, from the UV up to the edge of the mid infrared. Uh, the waveguides feature low propagation loss, but at the same time, very good uh, polarization uh, behavior. So they are polarization maintaining, show low birefringence. Uh, we have a few tricks so that we, we can efficiently couple our, uh, our optical chips with, uh, with fibers, but at the same time, obtain uh, pretty compact circuits with a radius of curvature uh, below one millimeter, which is for glass quite an achievement. And last but not least, uh, our turnaround time is down to four weeks, uh, which is uh, which uh, allows for very fast development cycles and, and iterations. So here I won't spend too long on the on the physics behind, but we we mostly see here that uh, our process flow is very streamlined. There are just a few steps, and part of these few steps only a, a, a subset is is done in a clean room environment. And at the end of the of it, we obtain um, a gradient index uh, distribution and uh, nice uh, nice Gaussian modes in it. So, yeah. Um, so out of this platform, we, we are able to, to offer the, the standard um, passive functions for, for PLC. So all kinds of splitters, uh, directional couplers and taps. We have these mode converters for uh, fiber coupling for an efficient and, and uh, almost lossless fiber coupling. Um, Mox demox based on uh, interferometers, AWGs, that's, uh, that's also a current development. Um, yeah, crossings are also uh, are also available uh, for uh, for more complex circuits, and all of this is available now and standardized in a in a PDK that allows team to to start from your very very um, basic chip concept up to the prototyping and uh, and series production. Um, a subset of these of these PLCs we offer are called uh, WAFT, so for a waveguide array to fiber transposer. So they are actually interposers. Uh, that we proposed since 2016 to help um, silicon photonics packaging essentially, but it can also be INP or silicon nitride. So the idea is to interface one of our uh, glass chips uh, in between the fiber array, as we see here on the left picture and, and the uh, actual peak. So this glass chip can have several functions, but most of them is really to, to adapt the mode or ease the coupling from the fiber to the, to the peak and make it, uh, make it as lossless and, uh, and ease the assembly as much as we can. So we have several coupling types from edge top for grading couplers, evanescent coupling, which is a more advanced scheme. So yeah, that was a, that was a short overview of, uh, of, our, um, 
of our over, uh, offering, so covering um, short pulse GPSS lasers, so uh, passively Q switch cavities, and integrated photonics on glass. So don't hesitate to to uh, ask us questions in the chat or to visit our booth or our website. 